Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Uh, if you remember, they, uh, they had made their way back to Antioch, I think, in the last part of chapter 14. And they, they're coming back into Jerusalem uh, here as we start Acts 15. And uh, the first part of this uh, is going to be asking a question. And then uh, I think the uh, most of the first part of the chapter anyway is uh, dealing uh, with that question. And it's a question that uh, what, you, what has to happen for you to be saved. And uh, there's going to be a group come in and say, hey, you, this has got to happen in order for it to be saved. So let's read here uh, verses 1 through uh, 5. And uh, I don't know how far we'll get, but we'll start with that. Uh, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and uh, disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem and to the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the, gen the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful, needful to be circum, uh, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. <coughs> so as we uh, look here at these verses, they. Uh, if you remember, <coughs> as we stated there at the beginning, they made their way in Acts 14 back to back to Antioch. And uh, verse 28, the last verse of chapter 14 says, they And there they abode long time with the disciples. Don't know how, necessarily how long that long time is. <coughs> but uh, they did. And... Uh, there were some people that came there. You remember that, uh, as we stated uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, that uh, these uh, group of Jews, and I don't know if they uh, kind of like what I hear going on today, that they uh, send a few and uh, pay them to disrupt everything. But if you remember, uh, they stirred up things at Lystra, and Paul was uh, stoned to death there. Uh, <coughs> but they came and said, uh, except you be circumcised, uh, after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved. Now, uh, somebody gets on, well, they don't even have to get on TV now. They can get on the internet and do it. But let's just say somebody's broadcasting something that uh, says that you've got to do such and such in order to be saved. This happens uh, tonight. They brought it up two different occasions that you need to be circumcised. But uh, I've been places, uh, and uh, we had this lady <coughs> who had never been to church. She came, and... Uh, Came several weeks and uh, gave her life to the Lord. And she came in on one, one Wednesday night. This was the last time I've ever laid eyes on her. She came in one Wednesday night. And uh, Brother Butler asked if there any questions, any comments, any questions. And she said, well, I've been telling the folks that I work with that have been saved. And they have been asking me some questions. Can you speak in tongues? 
And I, I reckon her answer was, no, then you're not saved. Now, think even the uh, thing about jumping the pew was in there. Y'all want to line one up tonight? And Justin, you're it. You'd have to jump it for us. We'd, I think we'd vote you in for that. Uh, but what can be added to the need for Jesus? Now, one group of uh, writers uh, declare these visitors to be these people, teachers and leaders. Now, like I said, somebody gets on uh, the Internet, somebody gets on national TV, worldwide TV these days, and begins preaching, teaching that uh, you ain't saved unless you're, and you fill, fill in the blank. And you say, well, that, that's ridiculous. Let's, let's remember back in our history now. There's been folks to drink stuff. And they found them all dead the next day because somebody said, this is what we need to do. And, you, you know, uh, it'd be very easy for somebody to start adding to the gospel and get a bunch a follower, and deceive a bunch of people. So teachers and leaders, folks that were well versed in scripture, they, that was some folks that came uh, here. Uh, some of the very first believers, I'm talking about right after Christ ascended and the church was born, and uh, those 3,000 souls were added at the very beginning. Uh, this group, the group of people think probably they were well, some of them. Some elder statesmen, hey, they've been through a lot. They, they must know what they're talking about. They've got to know what they're talking about. And uh, just folks that uh, they were esteemed very highly. Uh, these people that came and uh, they didn't say that you have to be obedient to scripture. They did not say that you need to please God in order to be saved. They didn't say you need to please the church in order to be saved. They demonstrate your love. They didn't say anything about that. Uh, identify with believers. Keep yourself from being a stumbling block to others. But they said, if you... If you hadn't been circumcised, you ain't, can't be saved. Period. And you think about that. Uh, there's a big movement that I read about today uh, called a biblical worldview. I'm going to take you back several years. Uh, had this young lady who was uh, probably, the, at the time, the smartest student that I'd ever had. I think I've probably had some uh, since then that uh, would probably top her. But she became pregnant. And uh, one of my co-workers said... Uh, she needs to go have that taken care of. And I'm like, you know, there were times that this co-worker and I agreed on everything, but can't agree with that. I cannot agree with that. So, Several questions I'm going to ask. And I, I know who I'm talking to tonight, so I know that what y'all's answer is going to be. Uh, so when we come, when we come and accept the Lord, is it accepting the Lord plus something else, or is it just accepting the Lord? 
Uh, is a person's mind attention to be on Jesus alone? Or upon Jesus in a ritual of some sort? Is it to be, is a person's faith to be in Jesus alone? Or in Jesus in a ritual? Is a person's profession to declare Jesus alone? Or Jesus in a ritual? Is a person's life to bear testimony to Jesus alone? Or Jesus in a ritual? Is a person's witness to be centered around Jesus alone or Jesus in a ritual? Does God save a person whose body, mind, and soul are focused upon his son alone? Just Jesus or Jesus in some ritual, Jesus in some ceremony? Jesus in some act, some work, human effort, some physical substance. Can God add anything to the plan of salvation? That would divert anybody's attention away from Jesus. Especially in the very first moments of conversion. Could God cause uh, one of what would God want a, my, a man's mind to be upon anything else other than Jesus? To be upon Rushing to experience some ritual instead of focusing upon his son. Is it possible that something else is needed other than Jesus himself? And I go ahead and I add, is there honestly some physical substance needed in addition to to Jesus. Is there a ritual or ordinance that has a heart that can reach out and save a man from death? Or do people alone have hearts and the person of God alone have the heart of salvation? So, these dissenters came and threw this out. Now, uh, I want to take you back. We, we won't have to turn there, but I'm going to take you back. Uh, word had got back to the church at Jerusalem what had been happening down at Antioch. And they sent Barnabas down there to see what was going on. And he came back and got Paul. We've since learned that his name had been switched over to Paul from Saul. And they went down and spent a great deal of time with the good folks at Antioch. And the scripture says in Acts chapter 11 that the, they were called Christians first at Antioch. And this church at Antioch is the ones who sent Paul out on the missionary journey. Now lots of us have uh, probably uh, through time either seen, seen something hanging on the wall about Paul's missionary journey. It could be on the map or you've looked uh, or maybe you've looked in the back of you Bible at uh, some maps that shows uh, the first, second, and third missionary journeys of Paul and how he went and uh, what direction they went in, all the places that he visited. And the Holy Spirit called them, but it was the church of Antioch that laid their hands on them, confirming what the, they believed the Lord had done in Paul and Barnabas' life as they went out. And what have they done? Well, they went from place to place telling folks about Jesus. They went to the Gentiles. Amen. They went to the Gentiles and so that you and I can be saved. And now uh, they're back at Antioch 
And these dissenters, so-called, come and say, oh, except you've been circumcised after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved. So they determined to go back to the church at Jerusalem to find out what they said about such. Now, uh, does it matter what man says? Or does it matter what Scripture says? Does it matter what one verse says? Or does it matter about the collection of Scripture and what the collection says? I can pull out a verse tonight and leave you thinking if you didn't know any better, that God was a chicken. Because Scripture says, Oh, how often I've wanted to gather you as a hen does the baby chickens. But you wouldn't. We could make that our life verse, and man, we'd probably get some followers on that one. Uh... One guy gave me a rooster one time, and uh, I had it sitting on the top shelf, bookshelf behind my desk, and uh, got some odd looks. Well, that, that chicken, that rooster, means something. And, uh, but it does not take the place of Jesus Christ. So, Jesus plus something else? Or just Jesus? That's the question. Uh, and uh, I always go back to that radio program from several years ago uh, where they went around and uh, asked people on college campuses, I think it's called the Sounds of the Time, Ask people on college campuses, uh, are you going to heaven? How do you know? And I distinctly remember one guy saying this, at the end of my life, God's going to put my works on a set of scales. And as long as my good outweighs my bad, he's going to let me in. Now, is that based upon Scripture? No, that's based upon something that young man thought up in his in his head. Uh, because if we're just going to go on whether or not we're good or not, my Bible says there's none that doeth good. No, not one over in Romans chapter 3. Because we've all gone out of our way. Uh, and we've all together become unprofitable. Matter of fact, it says in Romans chapter 3 that all has sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, verse 2, they decide to go back to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders, and they're going to take this question to them and see what they say. Now, in, in my mind, they already know the answer. In my mind, they've already, they already know the answer. You see, one of those apostles I'm going to go to is a fella by the name of Peter. And we studied in Acts chapter 10 how that uh, he went to the house of Cornelius, a Gentile. And the reason he went is because... The Lord had told Cornelius to send for him because he would tell them the words that were needed for them to be saved. And if you'll turn back over with me to Acts chapter 11 and verse number 14, we'll see how when Peter got back to Jerusalem was retelling all the stuff there.
to the church there at Jerusalem, Peter recounted these words that Cornelius had told him. The Lord had told Cornelius, as Peter tells it in verse, uh, Acts 11, verse 14, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and thy house shall be saved. Now, did he go in there and say, circumcision? No. He went in there and told them about Jesus. Uh, now, they go back up to Jerusalem. And uh, verse 3 says, Being brought uh, on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria. Uh, need to maybe refresh ourselves about the folks that lived in Samaria. Uh, there's no other way. I guess I could think up of a way if I took a little while. Uh, the Samaritans were half-breeds, half-Jewish, Half night. Uh, that's what amazed the lady at the well. Why Jesus a Jew was there talking to her a Samaritan. So as they uh, came through, they declared unto them the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they came to Jerusalem... They were received of the church and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that God had done with them. But here's some Pharisees here. Now, these Pharisees, according to verse 5, are believers. There rose up certain of the sect of Pharisees which believed, saying, just like in verse 1, uh, that it was needful to circumcise them to command them to keep the law of Moses. Is that scripture? Or is that how they brought up? Well, being the Jew bringing up, uh, that, was, that was the law for them. That was the law for them. Uh, one group of writers says uh, the Pharisees uh, were looking for the Messiah to come. These had accepted Jesus as the Messiah, and but yet they still held on to their old beliefs. So, can a man earn? favor of God or do we just receive the favor of God? Just a, quick, just a couple of questions. Had one feller say one day that he believed somebody could lose their salvation. So I Stopped what I was doing and looked at him and said, what do they have to do? He ain't answered me yet. What does someone have to do to lose their salvation? Well, uh, I'm going to ask you this. What's somebody got to do to keep their salvation? So, here's a couple of other questions. Is, is uh, someone acceptable to God because he keeps the law? Now, wait a minute. Don't, don't be jumping on me saying we can't keep the law. Just hang on just a minute. Or, is, that, is someone, are we saved by confessing that we break the law and we're utterly dependent upon the Lord Jesus Christ? Can we work enough to become righteous? 
Or are we made righteous when we come to Christ? Can we say, Lord, I come in, we, we get to the, as they say, the pearly gates. That's what. And that we're asked the question, why, how are you getting in? I come, can we say, I come on my own righteousness? Well, come on in. Or, I'm here because of Jesus' righteousness. Can we say, Lord, I, I come offering my own package of works. Just look at the lifetime of this that I've done. Or, Lord, I'm here today. I'm needing your mercy for coming up short. In Marty's case, again. Can we, did we come to God to be prayed for what we've achieved with our own hands and efforts? Or do we come to praise God for what God has done for us through Jesus Christ? Did we receive glory? Because what we've done good, or do we, or is the glory to be lifted up to God for who He is and what He's done? Yeah, you know, I, I used to watch these uh, all these award programs and see if I agreed with and didn't agree with. And I'm gonna be honest with you: when I used to watch a, a certain award show uh, where they gave out the best movie of the year. There were several years where I, I kept up with stuff like that, but there were some years, what's that movie about? I've never heard of it before, and it, it would win multiple awards. Well, when it comes to our Christian walk and winning uh, awards, rewards, what are we going to do with them? Well, as we talked about uh, from time to time, we're going to meet around the throne of God and place them down at the feet of Jesus because he is the one who's worthy. Now, don't leave tonight saying uh, this, that Brother Marty has told us that we don't need to be baptized, that we don't need to take part in the Lord's Supper, we don't need to do this, we don't need to do that. What I'm telling you is, it's in Christ, in Christ alone. Went and visited a fella in, well, I tried to visit the fella in the jailhouse. And, uh, had brought a Bible to him and uh, they said uh, when I finally got to where I talk, talked to somebody in person they said uh, what's that? And I said well I, I brought a Bible for him we can't give him that he can make a weapon out of it I said okay so I Took it right back to, after I left, I took it right back to Lifeway where I just bought it a few minutes ago. And the uh, only com communication I could have with him was over a phone. Video conference kind of deal. He could see me, I could see him, and we had a telephone, uh, handheld telephone thing, receiver, and... Uh, And I asked him about his, uh, if he'd ever made a profession of faith. Did he know Jesus? Never did answer that question, but this is what he told me. 
I've been baptized five times, five different churches. I said, well, man, don't, don't you think it's time to, that we get serious about it and uh, accepting? Oh, I've been serious about it every time. And as I left him that day, the lady next to me, I don't know who she was visiting, but she quit cussing long enough with her, whoever she was visiting with, for me to have a word of prayer with this man. And uh, it's all about Jesus, plus nothing, plus nothing. And uh, as we go through this, the, the council's going to meet at the church. And uh, they're going to debate this question. We're going to hear from probably uh, a few. And uh, Paul and Barnabas are going to testify. It's so very important that we know what God's Word says. So when we hear of somebody saying it's Jesus plus something, we'll know they didn't find that in the Bible. Or even when they say, oh, it's not about it. It's just think good thoughts. That's all that's important. No, it's all about Jesus. My Bible still says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus plus nothing else. Uh, let's have a word of prayer and uh, we'll be closed. Anybody got anything for we have a word of prayer? Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this evening that you've given us to be in your house. Lord, uh, thank you for your word. Lord, questions are going to arise. We see a question arise here in Scripture tonight. But you have the answer. And Lord, uh, there are so many that uh, want to hear about this and about that. I ask about this and that. And Lord, may we, your children, have your word hid in our heart. Lord, that as the Holy Spirit moves, that uh, you'll call certain scripture, Lord, to our memory. That what we can say, what this is what thus saith God's word. This is how I believe because God's word puts it this way. Lord, it, it no, matters not how we were brought up, uh, this, that, and the other. But Lord, it's all about you. You never change. And if something in our life uh, goes against your word, then it's us that need to change. You, you're not going to. Lord, go with us through the rest of this week, and the Lord be with us as we come back Sunday. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.